Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Shadowrun Dragonfall. Tis I, for Jabbering Magpie, as per usual, and, uh... We are... Oh, hello, Dante. Oh, let's just pet him. And, uh... Yes, we just finished up here. Raiding the Dragon Kipper. So, let's check if anybody sent us any emails. None. Any jobs? No. Anything on the Shadowlands BBS? Oh, we can claim payment for sold data. There we go. 550 minus... Oh, so we only get 495 new yen. That sucks. Fred, where to find elves? Is there any uh, elf clubs or bars in the downtown area? I really want to meet one. They're just so beautiful. Maybe we can go dancing. Do elves like dancing? Alex Tusk. There's one on Torstrasse. Bring a bouquet of roses. Elves love a romantic. The elves clubs, are, clubs I know are, are the members only due to creepy groupies like you. Not really appealing when a guy is only after him for the shape of her ears. Fred, client screwed me. Benno is a fraud. I broke my first rule, always get full payment up front. Left me hanging for 50% of the cash after I completed the job. I'm sure he'll have changed his name by the time this poster goes up. Male elf, brown hair, gold eyes, look to be mid-thirties. Be careful with who you work for out there. Never thought I'd see you admit a mistake on here. Thanks for heads up. I'll keep my eyes open. We'll forward any info I come across if you're still looking to collect from the guy. Sent you some surveillance footage. Is this your man? Sure is. Nice one. I'll split the take with you if this lead pans out. Good to find there are still small newer among the runners. Hmm. Well. That's that. See if Iger has anything to say. Hey, Iger. Iger turns to face you. There's a pained look on her face. Look, I owe you an apology. I'm listening. When Monica died, I was pissed. That probably doesn't come as a huge surprise. But I took that anger out on you, and I shouldn't have. Seeing Vinter's body like that was enough to convince me. You couldn't have done anything to help Monica. And I couldn't either. We're dealing with something new. Monica was a good friend of mine. Her death hurt. I got carried away, and I said some things that I shouldn't have. I want to apologize for that. Her body relaxes. She begins to turn away. Anyway, that's all that I wanted to say. Yeah, there are a few things I want to say. She stops and turns back to face you. You can see the wariness behind her eyes. Go ahead. No one's stopping you. You're a valued member of his team, Iger. We need you now more than ever. Glad you're on my side. She raises her hand to stop you. The expression on her face has gone from cautious to annoyed. Cut the bullshit, fearless leader. I don't respond well to flattery. Ah, oh, forget it then. Yeah, I will. She shakes her head in disgust. You should go. I've got prep work to do for our next run. And you've got more important things to do than watch me pack my gear. Well, shit. Monica's file said don't piss about. Or flatter I guess she doesn't respond well with it. Max, what do you need? How are you holding up? Don't worry about me. I'm solid. You sure? You look a million miles away. I'll be with you when it counts. Right now, it doesn't. Okay, got some questions. I'm not big on sharing sport. Personal reasons. You understand that, I'm sure. The edge in her voice tells you she's not interested in continuing this on conversation. 
Sure, I understand, but I still need to talk to you. Glory lets out a weary sigh. Ask your questions, but do it quickly. I have things to do. I can't help but notice that you seem guarded and withdrawn. That's my problem, none of your concern. Mm. Well, if you want to talk to me, I can help. I doubt it, Chumper. I doubt it very much, but I appreciate the sentiment. Maybe later, when we know one another better, we can get into it. Now, is there anything else you need? No, I'm good. Take it easy, Glory. Yeah, you too. Oh, that's enough talking. So much talking. Talking, talking, talking. Oh, great, now we need to talk to Paul. Ansel's expression is hard when you've seen it before. When he speaks, his voice is grim. Iga told me of Greenwinter's death. She said that he died in the same monica way Mona Monica did. It wasn't a pretty sight. Ansel nods gravely. I know that you and Iga have had your differences. I will tell you that she was badly shaken by the sight of Winters' body. She also mentioned that you found something in Winters' safe, a package of very old discs. May I see them? Yeah, sure. Here you go. Good God. Gingerly, Ansel lifts the disc from the bundle and holds it up to the light. Slowly, he begins to turn it in his hand, causing rainbow patterns to shim across its surface. I haven't seen one of these since I was a boy. This is a DVD-RW, a data storage medium from the mid-2000s. I'm amazed that Winters was able to find a device that could play them. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I guessed it was a DVD. So, do you know how I can read these things? He puts down a DVD in his hand and quickly inspects the others. The first disc that I looked at might be readable. The others are damaged, some severely so. I have my doubts about them. For now, let's concentrate on the undamaged disc. There's a little shop outside. Data Haven. Talk to the proprietor, Mali Toily. She might be able to help. Tell her to put the cost of the device on my account. I'm on it. Yay! Paul Ampsel's account! Let's go charge a fuck ton of stuff to it. Let's buy a new PlayStation. Or an Xbox, or whatever the fuck they have remaining in the future. Hey, I gave you a cool drone. Welcome back, what can I do for you? How's my drone? These things take time. I'm making progress, so give me a little more. I'm looking for something that can play a DVD. Really? That is old tech. Very old, in fact. Just a moment, I'll go look. She turns to rummage for a bin of obsolete components at the back of her stall. Ah, yes, here we go. The dwarf wrestles a mid-sized flat screen display out of the bin. The display is old enough, has old enough hookups to connect to a DVD player. RCA, I know. Vintage. The player itself, though, this I do not have. You may wish to try your look down at the junkyard. There is a scavenger there. Primitive man with a crude disposition. If anyone here in the Kreutz Bazaar can help you find your DVD player, he can, but he will most certainly overcharge you for it. She takes a deep breath and smiles at you. But you're not here for gossip. Shall we conclude our business? I could give you a display for, say, 200 new yen. Um, charge Paul. Ah, very well. I'll have it packaged and delivered to her Hamsel straight away. Best of luck finding your DVD, Raider. I wish you well. So I'm lugging around an ancient laptop monitor. Todas Junkenyard. This should be fun. Alright. Oh, here's the junkyard. Never noticed this. Trotty. Oh, you sound pleasant. You were the hobo from the first game. A stout old man looks up from whatever old tech he's tinkering with to squint at you through thick old fashioned glasses. He pushes them up it pushes them up with an oil stained finger as he straightens up to nod at you. He speaks with a gruff but well meaning tone, heavily accented with German tonality. Guten Tag, what can I do for you? 
he he's sort of a mix between Somerset and Goebbels. Well, it tells me that you're meant to speak about two about DVDs. I will shrew send you my way, huh? Shrotty's smile broadens. Well, wonders never cease. Well, introductions are in order, I suppose. Shrotty Buchman, at your service. The old man raises a grimy hand in salute. Need something salvaging? Some old components? If you liked, I am indeed your man. Wonderful. How about that DVD player? Well, let's see. I think I've got something that'll work for you. Shorty rummages through the junk heaped on the table behind him. A few seconds later, he snatches a battered plastic lozenge shape from the pile. Ah, here we go. An old Korean player that I dug up last week. 2010 model. A real beauty. Shorty's smile broadens and he gives you a conspiratorial wink. I fix her up and I gotta run, but without any discs to read, I've been mostly using her as a paperweight. Sounds like what I'm looking for. How much you want for it? Shrotty glances back at the DVD player, a rueful expression on his face. Well, I'll admit it, I'm loath to part where there are plenty of folks out there who'd really appreciate an older player such as this. I don't know what your intentions are for it. I suppose, given time and trouble, I took putting her back together, I'd be willing to part for her for all worse, say. Shotty's art, eyes dart over your gear, a calculated expression on his face. About 500 new yen. Uh, got anything in trade? Fuck that. The old man pauses for a moment, considering. I'll tell you what, a few months ago I had, well, call it a difference of opinion with that Buragatsi fella from the soy calf shop. He hasn't let me into his establishment since, and I'd sell my mother for a decent cup of coffee. You get me a cup of Turkish coffee and that real stuff, not that fake junk, and I'll give you a DVD player. Sound like a deal? Oh, I already have some. <laughs> it's probably freezing fucking cold by now, but here you go. As it happens, I have a mug right here. Ah, thank you. Shrotty gratefully accepts this coffee and then snaps the lid back and inhales deeply, wriggling his moustache as he processes the scent. Yep, that's the real stuff, all right. Shrotty gingerly packs up the ancient device from the table and presses it into your hands. The plastic is scuffed and worn, and it rattles a bit when you move it. Give her some good use, okay? Right, now we can read ancient pornography. I'm sincerely hoping it's just ancient dragon porn. That'll fuck off, Iger. Hi. Mrs. Annoying Troll, we found ancient dragon dicks. Enjoy. Waving around, turgid as can be. Hey, Paul. We may have charged 200 grand, 200 quid TV to your account. It seems that Ansel has assembled the team in your absence. They stand out in a group around the old display that you and Mallet had Mallet deliver. On their faces you can see excitement and apprehension, curiosity and dread. Mags, have you procured a DVD reader? Yep, here you go. All it took was one cup of coffee. Good, this should only take a moment. Ansel disappears behind the ancient display. After a few minutes of fiddling with its battered inputs, he reappears, a satisfied look on his face. Everything appears to be functional. The disc should be ready to read. Well, don't keep us in suspense. Start the damn thing already. Mags went through the trouble of fetching everything. Let him do the honours. Amsel sets back, clearing a path for you to access the antique machine. Alright, let's stick a DVD on. Oh, I hope it's Sex in the City. A soft whirring sound fills the air as an ancient DVD player spins the disc up to speed. A scratch LTD display comes to life and a menu fills the screen. Play track one. The screen goes black and a cheerful digital chiming sound spills out of the display speakers. A crackle of static fills the air, coupled with a shrill electronic whine. A few moments the display goes live and a dishevelled looking man appears on the screen, his eyes glitter with excitement. The timestamp on the screen is 20, 2034.09.15. Hermie, I think I found her. After all this time, Feuerschwinger. 
I knew she wasn't dead. His speech is jittery. You can hear the urgency in his voice. She survived the Dragonfall, just as I've already said. I knew I was right. The screen explodes into static and the electronic whine in the background sharpens into a needle-like pulse of high-pitched sound. Somewhere in the background, Dante lets out a low whimper. The screen clears and an excited face is closer to the screen than it was before. The words spill out of him in a breathless tide. Taking a team into the SOX to retrieve her. The radiation be damned. We will take appropriate precautions, of course, but we must go. Hermie, I think that the body may be nearby as well. Somehow, it. She has survived for all of this time. The screen explodes into static again, then clears. The figure flickers across the screen. May not be back for some time. Look after Mum, okay? I worry about her. And Hermie, stay safe out there. I know that things are heating up in Berlin. And I know you. Student protests, civil uprisings. You'll be in the middle of it, I'm sure. Just stay safe, alright? I'll do my best to do the same. I don't think that what's going to happen when I step into the SLX. But I do know one thing. If a fire wing is still a danger, I will put an end to her once and for all. Okay. Track 2. The screen goes black for a moment. Then you figure appears on the screen, your latest client, Green Winters. His elbow is planted on the table and he's seated at, and his chin rests on his palm. The other hand is wrapped around a bottle of cheap whiskey. The timestamp on the video is 2053, 1225. Found a mess that you hated and left me all those years ago. Got it cleaned up as best as I could. Strange hearing his voice again. He tosses to take a long pull on of a bottle. It's good to hear him, even if he did insist on calling me Hermie. Dr. Adrian Vauclair, hero of the people, the Draken Slayer, my brother. He grimaces and rubs his eyes. Hard to believe it's been almost 20 years. Alright, so I'm gonna start recording these DVDs again for me, for Adrian, forever might wind up watching them. Every time I do this, it winds up feeling like a waste of time, but I feel I'm keeping doing it anyway, on the off chance that I'll find something important. If I stumble onto the clue that leads me to my brother, I know that I'm going to want it on film. I've been doing this for almost 20 years now, after all. No sense quitting now. Christ, 20 years. All this time, still no leads. Even with all my contacts and my resources. He takes another long swallow of cheap liquor. Even with my legendary bullheadedness, I've made no progress at all. I haven't turned up a single goddamn thing. Wanna hear something funny? The closest I've gotten to a clue was a rumour. Apparently, a team emerged from the SOX a while back. Nobody's clear on dates. But, and get this. He leans into the camera and gives a conspiratorial wink. Supposedly, they vanished without a trace. He upends the bottle, drains it and slams it back down the table. His eyes are rimmed with red. Not much of a rumour, considering I already know that you're gone, big brother. I live with that every day. Abruptly, Winters leans forward and reaches for something off-screen. The display goes black. Alright, number three. Christ, more reading. Oh, my voice. Green Winter's image appears on screen, there is an eagle look on his face. Time stamp of video is 2054-1012. Stumbling upon this archival footage of Feuerschwinger's original attack, months before the Dragonfall, easy to forget how devastating it was. Adrian saved a lot of people by bringing it down. I've got the footage all queued up to play. Starting it now, additional comments to follow. The slow whir of the, pit of the DVD sh player shifts to a high-pitched whine. Distorted wavering image blooms into the, into being on the screen. A timestamp in the upper right corner of the screen marks day July 6, 2012. It's difficult to make out what you're seeing at first. The screen scene is dark and smoky. The telltale flashes of emergency vehicle lights flicker on the periphery of the screen. The camera pushes in and you can make out two figures standing in a ruined landscape. All at once the sound cuts in. Again, for those of you who are just joining us, we come from you coming to you live from Stolberg. A few hours ago, the Dragon Feuerschwinger launched an unprovoked attack on this sleepy Hearts Mountain town. 
You can see the results behind me. Fire, ashes, and blood. You are joined tonight by a survivor of this latest and most horrifying attack. The reporter turns to face a pale man standing behind him. Sir, I understand that you've been through a terrible ordeal. Thanks for taking the time to speak for us tonight. The camera switches forward to a middle-aged man with a haunted look in his eyes. He stammered out to reply. Yes, of course. If you could, sir, could you please tell us about the people at home about about how you experienced this attack? It was horrible. Pure chaos. So many dead. People I knew, rested alive, trampled to death, trying to escape. My own house was burnt to ground during the fa attack. My family. We have nothing now. You all made it through this attack, though. Your wife, your kids. Yes, we made it, thank God. We rode out the attack in a small shelter. Me, my wife, two daughters. The shelter, it protected us, but the heat was just unbearable. We couldn't have stayed in there much longer than we did. How long were you holed up in there? Maybe four hours? I don't know. We just stayed inside until the heat died down and the screaming stopped. And what happened after that? When it was over, you know, the air cooled. We stepped outside. There was nothing left, just smouldering wreckage, dense cloud of black, oily smoke, and the stench in the air. God, that smell. It smelled like roasting meat. There was a long pause from the tortured look on his face. You can tell that the man is struggling to decide whether or not to continue speaking. Eventually he does. My girl. They found what's left of her nanny outside. Her body, what was left of it, was slumped against the shelter door. I kept telling myself that I couldn't hear a pounding to get in. But that isn't true. I could. I just couldn't bring myself to open that door. I couldn't risk my family like that. Not for her. Not for anyone. Thank you, sir, for taking the time to speak with us. Yeah. You heard it. An absolutely chilling account of tonight's attack. Again, the town of Stolberg has been reduced to ash. Another victim of the fire wing. Stay with us for more up to a minute reporting on Fire Stringer's Reign of Tower. Greenwinter's face reappears on the screen. Okay, it's time for a new approach. Adrian's a complete dead end, that's some pretty much clear by now. So I'm going to be doing some digging on Feuerschwinger instead. Let's see where this goes. Screen turns to black. Play track four. The DVD player ramps up to speed, filling the air with a shrill whining sound. Green Winter's image fla flashes on the screen. Time stamp is 2054, 1031. Well, that was a bust. Little progress on Firestringer, either. He shakes his head. I don't know. It's weird. It's just the, the information is there. It's just wrong somehow. It's just too well laid out. Too simple. Real life is messy, and this feels just a little too neat. Well, that's not the only thing that's nagging at me. I'm getting that tingly feeling all up and down the back of my neck again. Feels like I'm being tracked. I'm no Matrix hotshot like Clockwork or Schaefer. But I'm good enough to know when someone's on my scent. Gotta install some new security measures. Can't be too careful. Alright, number five. The display goes blank. Green Winters winks onto the screen. He's seated on the computer. Off to the left, an enormous monitor fills the screen. His voice carries an edge of panic. The timestamp on the video reads 2054 1109. Christ, I'm getting too close to something. There's a trail of bodies and there's beam disappearances. Gearbox, Martian, Peregrine, they've all disappeared within the past few years. Gearbox just went AWOL yesterday. They were all making the same sort of inquiries about firewing that I've been. There are ghost stories spreading around the Decker community. Stories about Deckers disappearing and then showing up again later, but wrong somehow. Scary stuff and I'm starting to think it's true. Blitz leans in to whisper to you. I know the stories he's talking about, Chief. Never put much stock into them. Not until now. Could these rumours be related to what's happening here? Am I paranoid? He pauses for a moment as if seriously considering the question, then he shakes his head and slams his fist on the table. No, I don't think so. Something big is happening here, and I'm right in the middle of it. Iger cuts in. That's a bit of a leap. Yeah, stop cutting in, people. We're trying to listen and watch. Jesus. One other thing. Tolstoy told me a story about a kill team that might be related to all this. Apparently a decker named Hellebora posted a theory about Foyer Swinger to the Shadowlands BBS about five years ago. About half an hour later a Millspec team showed up in the meat space and cooked her entire apartment with her in it. 
If what Tolstoy told me was true, Hellbore Alive posted the event. She described a killer, this great big orc with skin grafts. Then the whole thread disappears, gone without a trace. Oh, hello, I think we found our friend. Leap, Iger love. Sounds like he's on the right track to me. Iger holds the silence but concedes a point with a small nod. On the screen, Winters pauses, he looks like he's working up to something. Finally speaks. I'm going to just go ahead and say it. This has got to be Feuerschwinger. All of it. Adrian was right about her. She's still alive and she's out of the SOX. She's covering her tracks, working the shadows, preparing to rise again. That means I have to find you, Adrian. For everyone's sake. Frankly, I've got a lead. For the first time in two decades, I've got a solid goddamn lead. I've backtracked all of Matrix knows that Hellbore was looking into. Back before she got cooked. Whoever's been purging the Matrix didn't think about that. I found it. She turned up. Winter stabs a few keys on his keyboard and an image expands to fill the screen with his monitor. Satellite photo of a rural landscape and annotated GPS data. A set of map coordinates. So now I've got a target. Place to start digging. A Harfield Manor, conveniently located on an isolated stretch of countryside miles away from prying eyes. Matrix records indicate that some sort of data vault exists beneath this estate. So that's what I'm going to get into. into. And this is where we came in. As if on cue, Monica's familiar image winks onto screen. To Winters' left, Monica. I think I'm going to tap Shay for this job. She's got the skills to bypass whatever security for running out there. And she's gullible enough to take the job in the first place. Feed us some lines about flux state security and she'll eat up with a spoon. I warned her. Amsel's voice is choked with rage. I want her. On the display, Winter's mouth port parts into a broad grin. Time to put plans into motion. By this time tomorrow night, I should be have the information that I need. And on the off chance that Schaefer gets taken out, well, that'll tell me something too. Can't make an omelette and all that. Until then. Winters, you utter bastard. Track 6. When you play the 6 track, a small video window appears. You recognise the scene and window. You're looking at the tattered drapes and nicotine stained wallpaper of Winters' hotel room in Das Kessel House. The timestamp reads 2054-1110. There is a blur of motion in the haggard form of green Winters lumbers into frame. Suspicions confirmed. Schaefer dead. Christ. Winters reaches a shaking hand off camera. A moment later it returns, clutching a cheap plastic drinking glass. He gulps something down, wipes his mouth with the back of his hand and takes a deep breath. Okay, 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 okay. Back up, slow down, start from the beginning. Winters closes his eyes and makes a visible effort to calm himself. When he speaks again, his voice is steady. Got the call from my contact in the Kreutz Bazaar. Schaefer killed on the estate room. Matrix security at the estate cooked her brain. Considering Schaefer's skill and experience, on-site IC must have been extreme, even by Bolin standards. Security of that kind costs money real money. Given the evidence uncovered so far, corporate involvement unlikely. The connection to Firewing is too strong. So let's come out and say it. The dragon is what we're dealing with here and smart money says that she's coming for me next. Well, I won't go down without a fight. I've still got my contacts, still got my connections, and the flux state can be a hell of a weapon for the man who knows how to manipulate it. Winters takes another long pull from his glass, grimaces and swallows. Time for me to make my play. Gorse stories are not. Missing deck is a no. I've got to jack into the Matrix and start pulling strings. The countermeasures I installed earlier should be more than enough to keep me safe for 20 minutes. I'll be in there. Winters drains the rest of his glass and tosses it over his shoulder. A moment later, you hear the dull, clattering sound of hard plastic on Lino. Schaefer's death was tragic. She was a staunch supporter of the F state. But still, all things considered. Winters fishes for something off screen. A moment later, his hand reappears, clutching a data jack cable. Better her than me. He plugs his cable into his head, and the screen cuts to static. Eject for DVD. As your finger nears the eject button, a blank screen cuts in over static. A moment later, Green Winters' haggard face appears. If you're watching this, then I guess they caught up to me. They'll be after you too now. Blitz whispers into your ear again, more harshly this time. What the hell was that? Why didn't you warn me about this before I came here? We 
didn't know. Not exactly. Not exactly. I didn't come here to get hunted by a dragon. I'm not even a part of this. You are now, whether you like it or not, so quiet down and stop bothering him. Thanks, Glory. Whoever you are, whatever you think you're after, you need to find Dr. Adrian Vauclair. Not because he's my brother, because if Foyer's fingers are rising again, he's the only one who can stop her. You've seen what happens to people who get too close to this. I'm dead and dozens of us have died. You'll be next unless you can find Adrian. DVD over. Oh, that was pleasant watching, wasn't it? Oh, lovely. Um, though, mind you, Dietrich, it's your turn next time for your choice of movie night specials. I say we go for something light-hearted next time. Because I don't know about you, that was a bit heavy. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe this is a nice place to leave it. As uh, my throat is killing me from all that. This is the Jabbering Magpie signing off. Tatty bye for now.